They are winning in life. Hallelujah. We are experiencing you. We're being equipped by you. Hallelujah. And we're releasing ourselves and engaging and influence the world around us. We thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. Have your way in this place tonight, Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for Eric as he brings forth the word tonight. Father, I thank you that it's a word in season to those that are weary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. As we've come here tonight, hallelujah, we've come with open hearts. As we have come here tonight, we, we just shake off the things of this world. We shake off the distractions. We shake off anxiety. We shake off oppression. Hallelujah. Hall I declare that no satanic or demonic force can hinder the word coming forth. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you that the word tonight, Father, will, will, will prepare the way. The word tonight will prepare the way. Hallelujah. I thank you the word will prepare the way for greater victories, greater harvest, greater breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Oh, just worship him. Just, just worship out of your heart and just, just release every care and every worry. Just, just release it to him and any pressures that you have. Just let them fall to the side. Any, any bills that need to be paid, just, 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 let, just let the weight of everything just fall to the side. Hallelujah. And let the Lord have his way. Let the Holy Spirit have his way in this place tonight. We worship you tonight, Father. Oh, Rabbasong on the Remasi. Have your way in this place, Father. Have your way in this place tonight. Hallelujah. We make room for you tonight. Show us your glory tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Glory to God. Just stay with that attitude of worship. This is Psalm 34 in the Passion Translation. Drink deeply of the pleasures of this God. Experience for yourself the joyous mercies he gives to all who turn to hide themselves in him. So tonight we turn and we hide ourselves in his word. Amen. Worship in awe and wonder all who've been made holy. Say, I am holy because he's made me holy. Isn't that wonderful? For all who fear him will feast with plenty. Even the strong and the wealthy grow weak and hungry, but those who passionately pursue the Lord will never lack any good thing. Say, that's me. Glory to God. We passionately pursue you tonight, Father. We passionately pursue your presence. We passionately pursue your word. We passionately pursue your glory. We lift our affections to you right now. Hmm. Yes, Jesus. Come to the water, all who are thirsty. table all who are hungry come and feast and those who are weary those who are needy come receive
just from the inside out It'll grow us up Take us to a new level of glory tonight Yes, tonight a new level of glory Oh, say I'm coming up Say I'm coming up tonight Oh, yes, I'm coming up tonight I receive your glory Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. And when we come to your house, Father, it's coming to that river. When we, in our own, whether it's our personal worship time or corporate worship time, we're coming to the river. We're coming to a place that strengthens us. We're coming to a place that revives us. We're coming to a place that makes us new. Thank you, Father, for every heart here tonight. Let our hearts come up higher. As we hear the word t the, tonight, our hearts will come up higher. We set our hearts to receive the word tonight. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. We also know that our mind is renewed by the word. Thank you that your word is continuing to transform us. Your word is continuing to change us from the inside out. And we receive everything that you want to do tonight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, give him a shout of praise tonight. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Now, before you're seated, just, just want to read something to you. The Word. Talking about the Word. In Psalms 119, verse 49 says, Remember the Word and promise to your servant in which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort and consolation in my affliction that your Word has revived me and given me life. Anytime you get around the word, realizing that word will revive you and give you life. Amen. Amen. Eric, come on up. Eric's, uh, Eric and Nikki, they're our best friends. They live in Michigan. And I'm so grateful for them in our lives. And, and so just open your heart and receive what the Lord's placed on his heart for us tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give us the word. Love you, bud. Let's give us Jesus. Amen. And I'm so glad that uh, the Lord, it was a God thing, that uh, he hooked us up together and, and uh, with them. And uh, it's brought us up. Amen. And you got to be around people that will bring you up, Amen. not bring you down. Amen. And I want to introduce you to uh, my family tonight. Um, before I do, I grew up about five hours east of here in a little town called West Monroe, Louisiana. Anybody heard of that? There's a little show that called Duck Dynasty that kind of put it on the map. And uh, so that's where I grew up. And, and, uh, and then we went to Tennessee for, to, uh, to college, and that's where I met my wife, Nikki. And uh, I was on basketball scholarship there, and, and then she, she was my biggest fan. And she, she followed us to all the away games and cheered and hollered. And, uh, and so we've been doing life together since college. So, Nikki, you want, you want to come up? And... You don't want to come up? <laughs> She's like, no, I'm out. <laughs> but uh, next, next month, May the 18th, right? <laughs> we'll have been married 22 years. So... She's definitely been the mature one in the marriage. And then our son, Drew. Drew, will you stand up? Drew is graduating high school this year. And uh, so in about, uh, you know, a little about six weeks or so, he'll graduate high school. And at that time, we will then take applications for a beautiful wife. You must be a, first a Christian. No. There's no pressure. <laughs> so I'm looking out here, okay. <laughs> so that's them. 
Nick and Drew. Let's pray before we get started. Father, thank you so much. Lord, we thank you. For, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to deliver your word at this holy pulpit. We thank you for it, Father. I thank you that your word is alive and powerful. I thank you that in this word is freedom. In this word is deliverance. In this word is healing. And we thank you for that today. Tonight, Father, we set our faith on that. We put our faith in your word, Lord, that we're going to hear your word. Father, we set our hearts as good soil tonight to hear your word. And Father, it will produce in our life 30, 60, 100 fold tonight. We believe for the 100 fold. And we thank you for it tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you've anointed me to preach this gospel. And I thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will, turn to Romans chapter 12. Thank you for the one person that's excited about Romans chapter 12. <laughs> the rest of you catch up. I'm going to read out of the message translation because I'm sure y'all, uh, I don't know if anybody's read from that, but I'm going to. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The message translation says it's so unique. And if you're following along in your Bible, if you've got a King James, you're not going to be able to even come close to what this says. But it says, don't become... So just listen, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best in you develops well-formed maturity in you. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. January 20, 2017, I, we had just gotten back from the Kenneth Copeland Ministers Conference, and we were home. And I had a dream. I called it a glimpse into heaven. And I woke up, and I realized that I, I had just dreamed about heaven, and it seemed part of heaven. And what I saw was this cloud that it was a picture in the cloud, and I saw myself from behind standing at what I knew to be the glassy sea. I knew it as the glassy sea because of that song that they sang, Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, you know, they cast their crowns around the glassy sea. And so that's how I knew it. So I was excited, like I knew I'd just seen this, and, and the, the magnificence of it, it was quick, it was a glimpse, and the magnificence of it was so great, I can't even describe, I, I've tried to put into words what it was, and so I went to the scriptures, and it's in Revelations, you can read about the sea of glass, and it's, it's before the throne, I didn't get to see the throne, but I saw this sea of glass, and so I'm, I'm excited, you know, I'm, I'm running around, and I just, I just dreamed about heaven. You know, that'd be fired up. You'd be fired up. And I said, well, okay, Lord, <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you want me to, what, what's, why? And he said this to me. He said, my people need to be more heaven-minded. And I said, wow, and I knew what he meant. He wasn't just talking about when we all get to heaven. Although, that's it's got to be something that's on our minds. Because people aren't giving eternity any thought anymore. They're just living their life with no thought of eternity. But there's one or two places everybody's going to end up. You're going to end up in heaven, or you're going to end up in hell. Now, if you're born again, you're going to heaven. Which means that uh, we're going to see Jesus one day. We're going to look into his eyes. And I don't want to have to introduce myself when I get there. You know what I mean? You know, you spend time with him. You get to know him. And, and he becomes part of your life. And, and it's, you know, it's great. You know, I love that one song where he talk, the guy talks about when he gets to heaven and, and he saw Abraham and Jacob and Isaac. But he wanted to see Jesus. You know, and, and that's where I'm at. I want to see Jesus. It'd be great to see David. I want to sit down with David. But when I get to see Jesus, 
And I get to embrace him. You know, Jesse Duplantis talks about when he got to heaven and he was standing there talking to Jesus and he said it was like he's there with you personally, but he's also everywhere else. That is so cool. But I'm looking forward to that day. But he wasn't just talking about that. We have to have that end in mind. But he was talking about being heavenly minded or or heaven minded all the time. But this is the way that we can live right now. See, because when we get born again, Eternity starts right then for us. That's when life begins. It's not when we get to heaven. It's right there. When you make Jesus Lord of your life, boom, right then. And you can live the life that God's called you to live because he's provided everything good for us to be successful, victorious, overcomers. That's what what he's called us to be. And so when I saw this, that's what the Lord said to me. And I thought to myself, Wow, okay, cool. I got a message for Sunday. Well, I go, you know, at at our church, uh, my wife's dad's our pastor, Pastor Bob Montgomery, great man of God. This year we're celebrating 30 years of ministry uh, at the church. He goes over to Ukraine and Russia a lot, and and we've gotten a chance to go over with him. And just, I'm talking about, we've we've heard and seen so many miracles. He, He... uh, when he goes over there, they call him Grandpa because so many couples over there that had gotten into drugs and things like that and they're barren and can't have babies and, and for different reasons. And they come up and, and they lay hands on them and then they come back a year later and they have a baby. And they hold the baby up and say, say hi to your grandpa, you know, <laughs> through an interpreter and all that. But I'm talking, it's over 100 and it's just, it's, it's almost become commonplace where he's come back and said, hey, yeah, seven more babies were born and, you know, things like that. And see, we got to celebrate those things yeah. as the body of Christ. When we start, when we hear about things like that, we got to celebrate those things. They, it should never be a common thing. A miracle should never, we want them to be common. Yeah. That's what we're searching for. That's what I'm hungry for. Yeah. I want to see that every time we walk into the building, people get healed, people get delivered, people get saved. Miracles happen. People get out of wheelchairs. Deaf ears open, blind eyes see. That's where I want to be. But we got to, we got to celebrate these things when we hear about them. But anyway, so he, we get to preach at church. Okay? So, so I'm getting to preach this message. Well, you know, it's this Sunday and that Sunday and the next, you know, and, and I, well... I've about exhausted that topic, I guess. And, but the Lord was still just, this thing has been burning in me for over a year. And so I'm so glad that I get to share it with somebody <laughs> besides our church in Michigan. So he said, my people need to be more heaven-minded. And the scripture that came immediately to mind is one that we've all, I mean, it's been preached on a thousand times. Philippians chapter 3, turn there. With that thought in mind, with that thought in mind, he says, brethren, verse 13, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to forget some things that are behind. (laughs) And reaching forward to the things which are ahead. Turn to your neighbor and say, you better start reaching forward. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The Amplified says, for the supreme and heavenly prize. See, this is what we're we're going for. This is it. And I I was reminded, I was in this, uh, I graduated high school, you know, and and I was, you know, an athlete. I I was, you know, full ride to play basketball somewhere. So I think, you know, I'm, pretty confident you know so my youth pastor says hey come run this 5k race with us I said no I don't I don't want to run his punishment you know at that point and so I get I said finally he talks to me until I'm gonna run this 5k race but I'm, if I'm gonna run a 5k race I'm gonna win it and I didn't train for it but I didn't need to train because you know I was an athlete I used to look like Drew you know real skinny and in uh he was, he was walking around the house the other day, and he had his shirt off, you know, and you can see lines in the stomach. And what those are 
our stomach muscles. I don't know. Some of y'all might remember. Uh, I hadn't seen those in a while. You know, and when I walk away from the mirror, I still think I have those. But then when I get back, and I said, put a shirt on, man. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> That's a, you know, so, I, so I get in this race, and I get to the very front of the line. And I see these guys, and they're in their you know, race stuff, and I've got on these baggy shorts, and you know, I'm still going to win. I get to the front of the line, and I'm, I'm lined up. And they, these guys, a couple of these guys, Kenyans, like they, they go to these races, and they train for the, you know, for the I'm going to keep up with these guys. So they take off, boom. I'm on, we're, we're on a sprint. And we're sprinting. This isn't a jog. It's not even a fast jog. It's a sprint. And we, we round that first corner, and we're heading in to this next, you know, leg. And they're already way out in front of me, and I'm running as hard as I can. And I, the thought came to myself is, I'm not going to win. Oh, man. There's no way I can... Then this pain, right... Right up underneath the rib. Y'all know what? Who, you, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> right up under here where it's like, and it catches your breath a little bit. It start, and I start slowing down, slowing down, slowing down until I was at a complete stop. <gasps> Bending over like this, you know, trying to catch my breath. And the pack, you can see, <laughs> the pack's starting to catch up a little bit. Those guys are long gone. And uh, I was hurting so much. I, I mean, I was just trying to catch my breath and, and try to make this pain go away. People are just passing me, <laughs> making fun of me. Until somebody came by and, and they stopped. They said, what are you doing? I said, I'm done. I sat down on the curb. I said, I'm done. What do you mean you're done? Yeah, I'm not going to win. I'm done. They said, whoa, 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 you, you're misunderstanding. It's, you're going to finish. you got to finish. you got to get to the end. And they took the time to coach me up. Because I was sitting down. I had to first get up. They took the time to, you know, get through all of my mental stuff. To at least get me on my feet. Well, I can't, I can't run. Well, okay, let's walk. You know, because it's better to be walking toward the finish line than sitting down. <laughs> Even if you got to crawl and you're moving forward. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. You know, they got to the Red Sea and they were murmuring and complaining. You brought us out here to kill us. We, at least we had meat. And the Lord told Moses to tell the people, tell them to hold their peace. You know, that was just a nice way to say, you know, be quiet. <laughs> and tell them to go forward. And that's what we got to do, is we got to go forward. Yeah. And maybe you're at a place where you, you, you're not running at it. Maybe you're not running. Maybe you're not even walking. Maybe you're not even crawling. Maybe you were like me where you sat down. Maybe, maybe it's not a thing where you've given up the faith, you know, where you, you haven't denounced Christianity, you're sitting here. But maybe on the inside, there's some things that used to be in your heart that you put way, way down deep that you don't chase anymore. You put them so far down deep that you don't want to think about them. We got we to gotta finish this thing. We're at the end of the end. And this is burning in me so much. That, that Jesus is coming back so soon. And there's so much that I want to do in my race. See, my race isn't your race, and your race isn't their race. Everybody's got their own race. Yes. Amen. That's what Paul said, is I, I fought a good fight. I've kept the face. I finished my race. Finished my course. Because yes. we each have a job to do. Amen. He said, forgetting those things which are, I press forward there's a there's a famous marathon guy i can't i really can't pronounce his name it's meb Kevlazicki, if if anybody's into that 
He said this. He said, everyone comes into a race with a specific goal, whether it's to win, hit a certain time, qualify for a different race, raise money for charity. But on a fundamental level, a marathon is a race in which thousands of people share the singular goal of making it across the finish line. So that's where we're headed. We're headed. We're, we are going to be the ones that see the return of Jesus. Amen. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born into the earth, they prophesied of his coming. And there was a generation that saw. Now hundreds of years after his life, his, his death and resurrection, and hundreds of years they prophesied of his coming. And we will be the generation. Do you realize that all of the, all of the great people in the Bible, the, the, the stories that we read, the Moses, the, the Davids, the Abrahams, and, and, and all the, the Daniels, I bet that they wish they could be in this time when it says that the latter glory, that the latter reign, that all of these things are going to be combined in one whoosh to usher in King Jesus. Isn't that going to be awesome? And see, that's what the Lord's been doing in me for all this time. It's I got my eyes on that. It's focus. Colossians says in, in uh, chapter 3, verse 2, set your mind on the things above, not on the things of this earth. Yeah. It's to set your minds. And, and that means that you're, you're setting your, your uh, affections, that you're focused. That's what that means. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, if you will turn there. I, I like this, this passage. Verse 1, and you he made alive. Amen. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. You're not dead anymore. Right. Jesus came in and made your spirit alive. Amen. We are alive and well. Amen. You were dead in trespasses and sins. Skip down to verse 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up together Amen. and made us sit together in the what? He said, my people need to be more heaven or heavenly minded. See, we sit at a different place. But if you become so well adapted to the culture that you fit into it without even thinking, then it's going to bring you down on a level that is far beneath where God wants you to live. Amen. We're seated in the heavenly places in, in Christ Jesus. You ever done one of those little uh, puzzle mazes? We just draw, you know, and there's a there's a dead end, so you keep till you get to the finish. You ever done one of those? Well, isn't it interesting when you do that that you're looking at it from above, so that you can see all the dead ends? Well, you know, you're not to draw that way because it's a dead end. But if you're in the maze, you might have to go this way, and you might run into a dead end. See, we're seated in the heavenly places. That means that the Holy Spirit can give us insight and wisdom. It says that he's, he, he, he can guide us into the truth. And see, we, we can see things by faith. We walk by faith and not by This is the way we live. You know, it kind of bothers me a little when people say, well, that faith movement or the faith denomination, it's not a movement, it's not a denomination, it's a lifestyle. Right. This is the way we live. Do you think that they're sitting up there in heaven, you know, spitting out a bunch of doubt and unbelief? Well, I don't know if these streets of gold are real gold. They, you know, the, that diamond is probably just one of those CZs. <laughs> what they say is what they mean. Right? Call those things that be not as though they were. I was really blessed when I read that book. And Jesse, when you got there, and Abraham came over. I don't know, have y'all, who's read that, his story? Okay. We got there, and, and Abraham came over, and an angel had escorted him there, and he was so thrilled to meet Abraham. And Abraham said, well, 
How are you doing? He said, I'm doing fine. Glory to God. And the angel said, glory to God. And Abraham said, glory to God. Because it wasn't just some religious cliche, some, some line. Great God Jehovah, who was and is and is to come. It meant something. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I say praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Those things just aren't just a filler. <laughs> I'm getting more amens from this side over here. <laughs> so back to Philippians chapter 3. Verse 15. He said, Therefore let us, as many as are mature... Have this mind. What mind? The mindset to move forward. The mindset that we're going for this prize, this supreme and heavenly prize. We're focused on it. We're focused in on this. And see, if I'm focused in on this, then I'm gonna I'm gonna set my life by it. You don't you don't enter a race like I did, having not trained, having not done anything. You know, I, I got a friend right now that's training for a marathon. He's 50 years old, and he wanted to challenge himself to do it. And uh, I said, you know, <laughs> go ahead. Don't ask me to help you. <laughs> and he's out there, and he's running. He's training. He's training his body. He's eating different stuff. It's become a lifestyle for him. Why? Because when he gets in this race, he wants to finish. It says, let as many of us as are mature have this mind. How many mature folks we got in here? <laughs> Amen. Verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. See, if you're, if you're going to move to another country, would you just pick up a move and then just figure it out? Or would you get online? Now, Pastor Justin... He is a researcher, and he'll get online and research things, and, and he, he can tell you about cars. And Like, if I told him, hey, I was thinking about this, then he would get on and research it, then he'd give me the answer, and then that would be it, and I wouldn't have to do any of the work. <laughs> but, see, but I'm telling you, he gets on, he researches, and then, you know, and, and, and that's, you wouldn't move to another country without getting out, researching. But we had it in our hearts... Can I just tell you about me just for a minute? I'm seven, eight years old. Guy comes into church, guest speaker. I got saved on Easter Sunday when I was five. Guy comes into church, preacher, and has an altar call. You know, I had a heart for God. I'd go up to the altar. And I was seven or eight years old, somewhere in there. Got filled with the Holy Spirit. Spoke in tongues. Went down on the ground. They said I was out for 30 minutes. And <clears throat> I remember, you know, seeing things. And, and uh, I went and asked my dad, or I went and um, I told my dad, he said, hey, what did the Lord speak to you? I said, well, I'm going to be a preacher. And then that was it. And then, you know, sports kind of became my life and, and went to college. Well, we went to a Christian college. They had chapel. Well, I sat up in the back. Because that's where the cool people sat, was in the back. And, you know, I'm not going to come up to any altar call because they might ask me to go to Africa or something. And I, I'm not going to Africa. I'm not going to be one of those people that go to Africa. So <clears throat> we get past college, and then I'm like 25 years old now, and we had moved to Michigan, and gotten involved with the ministry there. And uh, this, this preacher comes in and just reads my mail. He said, you got called when you were a young boy, and you just kind of put it down. Not that you've really been running from God, but you hadn't been chasing the call. Well, you, just a few years after that, I was like, man, I, I really want to go to Africa. <laughs> and... Uh, 
the Lord just put that in my heart. So I, so I told our church, you know, Nikki and I are just, I got up, and I just boldly by faith, Nikki and I are just believing we're going to go to Africa. <laughs> well, this lady in the church buys us this book. And, <clears throat> you know, it had all the, just like, you know, you read about the, the land and the economy and the different uh, sightseeing things like Victoria Falls. Have you seen that, Victoria Falls? You haven't seen it? I want to see Victoria Falls. <laughs> and just so different things that you read about. Well, Nikki got so into it that she started learning the language. And she downloaded this app on her phone that would, that would message her. And it was time for her daily five-minute, uh, you know, what was it, Swahili? Swahili. I was like, I thought she was speaking in tongues, you know. <laughs> I didn't know what she was doing. I was like, what are you doing? You know, because it was different tongues than what she normally speaks in, you know. And so it was Swahili. And, and um, so anyway, all that to say, we're going to Africa in, in uh, December. Isn't that awesome? So I'm excited about that. Amen. So we're going with, with uh, this group. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to get to go with y'all. So that was kind of a, uh, you know, just a dream that God had put in me. And I didn't know it when I said, I'm not going down there because they're going to ask me to go to Africa. <laughs> but it was in there. And see, we wouldn't do that. If we're going to move to a different country, we'd, we'd do the research. We'd, you know, we'd, we'd start learning the language, learning their culture. Well, think about it. We're going to heaven. How do they act up there? What's their language? They running around all worried about stuff? Is money a problem? It's not a problem. See, that's, see, let me help you with something. God doesn't value money. He values people. It takes the money sometimes to get the people, but he values people. And so I learned this, and this became really big inside me because we used to, you know, we take up an offering for missions and things like that. And, you you know, sometimes you get in the habit. When you start getting in the habit of giving, it's a good habit, but if it becomes routine, where you, you know, you just need to put your faith on it every time you do it. And we've gotten to a place that giving has become a lifestyle. We don't try it. It's become a lifestyle for us. And so it wasn't a thing where we gave and we're going to sit back and go, all right, we're going to see if that works. We never did that. It, we, got, we got started young and we give because, because the Bible said to. The Bible said that, you know, there were promises if you tithe and then pass that and you're sowing and you're giving and your alms and all this. And so... It's got so big in us that when we gave, it was like we were there. And so we would send pastor on these trips, and then we'd hear about these miracles. Well, you don't get to see it with your own eyes. He comes back, and he said, well, you know, we had a, a woman that had this cancerous growth on her neck, and it dissolved in the service, and a, a deaf ear opened. And then, well, we had this one lady, and we were there with him on, on this one trip. And this lady came in. And she was, she had a cane and she was dragging her right foot like this with her cane. And uh, she came up, she said, I want prayer. And um, so we all laid hands on her, loosed the power of God. And pastor says, okay, let's walk. And he got on one side and, and I got on the other and she, you know, she had our arms. She took one step. And she took another step. And that third step she took, her leg came up and it straightened out and came down like this. And she started Hallelujah. running like, and then she pushed me out of the way. <laughs> and she held past her and she, and she started walking like this, you know. And, and, and then she pushed him out of the way and now she's doing it on her own. Amen. She was dragging it coming in. Now she's walking like this. And she would stop and she would do this and just, you know, cover her mouth. She was so, and then Nikki was, Nikki was sitting there and she was going like this, you know. And when we saw this right in front of our eyes, well, next thing I know, she's walking out the building. I'm like, I got to get a picture with this lady. <laughs> where are you? Hey, where are you going? <laughs> well, she was so excited. Well, the next day, there were four flights of steps 
and she walked up every one of those flights of steps to get to the place where we were having the service that day. And I realized something. I realized that all of these times where I'd sent pastor on this trip, that I had a part in all that. And when I said, and when I said God doesn't value money, well, how much is a soul worth? Because he gave everything that he could give. You wouldn't give everything that you could give if you valued something so much. Where, where, where it was like, I'm going to I'm gonna hold on to this. Now, I'm not saying he didn't value Jesus, no, don't, so don't go there. I'm just talking about the money. And so he, I realized that day that I had a part in that, in my giving. That I, that I was, even though that woman with the issue of blood had spent all that she had. You, there was a, I don't remember who it was, but it was one of the richest guys in America or in the world, and he, and he got sick. And he said, I would give it all to have my health. Yeah. What about a soul? What about a soul? And we do these different outreaches and things, and we send people here and there, and there's outreaches locally. And we go, yeah, I'll give you know, this or that. What about a soul? If it were your own kid, what would you give? If, if my kid got sick and it took everything that I had, what would I give? Everything that I had. See, they see it up there. There's this reserve. Lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. And if we, could, if we could only see it by faith, <laughs> we, well, this is the way we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live and walk by faith. But so, for some reason, see, it's gotten quiet. You start talking about money, it gets quiet. It's like, <laughs> should I take up an offering now or wait? <laughs> we, uh, we played this, Nikki bought this game. I don't know if anybody had ever played it. It's called, there, there's a, one game called Life. Anybody ever played that game of life? Yeah. Well, they got a Christian version called Generosity. Anybody ever played that one? Well, Nikki bought Generosity, brought it home. Well, we were playing with some family members. And, and well, Generosity, same thing happens. Well, you, you can get an inheritance or you can get money a certain way. And then it will ask you, do you want to give part of it? And then you get to decide how much of that money, like you just got an inheritance of 16000 how much would you like to give? And you say, well, I want to give, you know, 10% or 20% or 50% or 100%. But then whatever you decide you're going to give, that's going to go into your heavenly treasure. Well, then you have to, you have to draw another card that says what your motive was, whether you had a good motive or whether you did it to be seen, or there was a couple other things. And so if you say, well, I'm going to give 100%, and your motive was wrong, then you don't get to put it in your heavenly treasure. And so at the end of the game, whoever had the most money in their heavenly treasure won the game. Well, our one, <laughs> our, our one person that was playing the game with us, we told him all the rules to start. And we get to the end of the game, and we are all counting up all our stuff. You got to count up your heavenly treasure. You got to count up the, the money that you had besides that and the different things. And well, he goes, well, How much did you have? How much did you have? How much did you have? Well, he had the most money, but it wasn't in his heavenly treasure. He goes, Yes, I win. Nope, you don't win. Why not? Because the rules are, whoever had the most money in their heavenly treasure was the winner. And it was actually Nikki. So Nikki had the most money in her heavenly treasure. Why can't, well, that's not right. Why can't, I had the most money. No, see, you can't take that money with you. Right. <laughs> so what are you going to do with it? This, this, is, this is what being heaven or heavenly minded it's a different way of thinking. 
Renewing the mind is learning who we are in Christ and living it right now. Everything that Jesus did on that cross and through his resurrection is available to me and to you. We just grab onto it and receive it by faith and live this thing. Jesus said, pray this. Thy kingdom come. Come on. Thy will be done. Where? On earth. Where? As it is in heaven. We want days of heaven on earth. We can live it right now. Right now. The time is now. Don't say three months and then come the harvest. Don't say, well, if this happens or that happens. The time is now. It's a call to duty. It's a call to get up off the curb and to crawl or to walk or to run. And if you're walking, it's time to run. And if you're running, it's time to run faster. If you're sitting on the curb, come on, get up. That's, the time is right now, saints. It's time right now. There's people every day that they're dying, they're getting killed, whatever, they're going to hell. And God has set me and you in a strategic place to be able to save these people. And the reason why Jesus hasn't come is because God is long-suffering and merciful because He doesn't want to see anybody go to hell. Because what is hell? Hell's the absence of everything that's good. God is good. So everything that's good is now removed, and that's what hell is. The absence of God. No hope. So don't become so adapted to this culture that you fit into it without even thinking. We aren't just citizens once we get there. We're citizens right now. That's why the Bible calls us ambassadors, because we're representatives in a foreign land. And see, the people in the Bible, Abraham, Hebrews chapter 11, it said... It said that he was looking forward to the city whose builder and architect was God. What city was he talking about? He was looking ahead. Paul was looking ahead. Uh, Even Jesus, for for the joy that was set before him, he was looking ahead. Focused on where they were going. says that by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with whom the same promise, for he waited for the city which has foundations, who builder and maker is God. Verse 16 says, now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Woo. Why is this important? Because it says that darkness will cover the earth, gross darkness the people. Well, if you become so well adapted to the culture that you fit into it without even thinking, that darkness can get on you. Mm-hmm. But we're called to be light. Yeah. That's right. The Bible says God is light. Yes. And so because of that, we are sons of light. And what does light do? It dispels darkness. We're to go into the dark situations and shine the light. Mm-hmm. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 18 says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Flip back over to Genesis chapter 1. Let's look at this for a minute. Verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. We're talking about image here. Look at Genesis chapter 5. Verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image. So Adam did what God did. God created man in his image, in his likeness, and Adam did the same thing in his image, in his likeness, to be like him, to be a replica. But then, why is it that in uh, Exodus chapter 20, when the Ten Commandments come out, one of them is to have no carved image. Why Why would that have to be one of the Ten Commandments? Because from the beginning of time, Genesis chapter 3, Satan has been trying to destroy or taint the image that God created man to be in his likeness, in his image, a replica of him. People that would speak like him. People that would subdue and have dominion like him. People that would be kings and priests like him. And so... Genesis chapter 3, if you look at this, it says, verse 4, The serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows in the day that you eat, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Wait, wait, wait. I thought we were already created in His image. I thought we were already created in His likeness. But here, here he comes in going, no, 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 God, do, God don't want you to be like him. He, he knows that if you do this, that you'll be like him. He's threatened by, no, no, he already did it. And so that's what Jesus, when Jesus came back to earth to, to get this back for us, to restore fellowship with man and to, and to restore the image. And so when you get born again, you go from dead to life. Well, well now you're remade in the image. Behold, you know, now you're a new cre- creature, a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are what? Just like God. And so he's been doing this, and a lot of, a lot of us in the body of Christ have to renew our minds constantly to who we are because we sell ourselves short. It's not an arrogant, you know, prideful thing. I think it's, it's, it's more of a problem that people don't know who they are in God. And one of the things that uh, I have to remind myself of, who I am. Nikki spent hours and hours and hours and f- went through the scriptures and found a bunch of scriptures of who you are in Christ. And it was, it's like seven pages worth of, of scriptures. Well, I'm loved. You know, I'm more than a conqueror. You know, I'm an overcomer. I'm a saint. I'm beloved. You know, I, he's called me out of darkness into his light. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. What? Because Jesus said that. That's why. All the things that the Bible says about us. Why? So that we can renew our minds to that, so that we can walk in it, because we're citizens of heaven. So it's time to walk like a citizen of heaven. We're citizens of heaven. So it's time to act like a citizen of heaven. We're citizens of heaven. So it's time to speak like a citizen of heaven. What Jesus said, all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. So what's holding us back? He gave it to us. Woo! Somebody say, woo! Woo! (laughs) But if we buy into this lie in Genesis chapter 3, say, well, you know, not, not really, can't be for me. I mean, Brother Vic, that's fine, but for, for, for me, you know, because he's, you know, he understands. The 
the Phillips translation in Romans chapter 8, verse 19 says, the whole creation is on tiptoe to see the wonderful sight of the sons of God coming into their own. Let me read that again. The whole creation is on tiptoe to see the wonderful sight of the sons of God coming into their own. It's time we come into our own right now. We want to see His glory. It's time we come into our own. (laughs) We're light. We carry light. It says Isaiah chapter 60, it says to arise and shine. Those are action. Those are verbs. Get up off the curse. Let your light so shine before men. That means you have a choice. We even learned that song in Sunday school, Hide It Under a Bushel. No. You learned that as a kid. Who give me five more minutes? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, verse 1, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, do you understand all of these great men in the Bible, women that we read about, are cheering us on to finish this thing? Do you realize that? This is our time. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Because we can't run with weight. Sin's going to affect your confidence. It's going to affect your faith. You can't run with it. Weight is a hindrance. Anything that hinders. That's what that word means. You can't run a marathon race with with a bunch of weight on you. Everything in the Bible, Jesus says to cast it on Him. Don't worry. Don't care about what you'll eat. You know, do I clothe the birds, clothe the grass, feed the birds? How much more valuable? And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Watch this, watch this. Looking unto Jesus. That's who's at the finish line. The author and the finisher. See, Jesus was a finisher. We got to finish. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to go routinely about life. This is the time to finish. Are you hearing me? He's, who for the joy... He said even on the cross, it is what? Finished. Who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross. He was focused on where, where He was going, what He was doing, what He had to do. Despising the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged. I run into a lot of people that are weary and discouraged. And the reason why is because they got their focus on the wrong things. We got to get our focus back on the right things. For I know the plans I have toward you, says the Lord. Plans of good, not of evil. There's still a plan. You say, well, I messed it up. Years ago, I messed it up. Mm -mm. No, a lie. That's a lie. It's time to get up. It's time to walk. It's time to run. It's time to run faster. Let me just read this to you from the... This is the message translation. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, you know, the cloud of witnesses. All these veterans cheering us on. It means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished His race we're in. Study how He did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. 
that exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. Why? Because if you don't know where you're going to, how are you going to get through what you're going through? And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, Go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. I like that. I like that. Can I get somebody to come up and play on the keyboard or guitar or whatever? I, I want to talk about Peter for a second as we close. Peter touches my heart, the story, his story, because he was called, followed Jesus. And Jesus told him that Peter had good intentions. We'll go, we'll, we'll go to the grave with you. What? We'll fight till the end. And Jesus said, Peter, you'll deny me three times. He walked with him. I mean, he, he rubbed shoulders with him. And when Jesus was there, they were accusing him. And, and then they came to Peter. Weren't you one of them? No. Weren't you one of them? No. Weren't you one of them? I never knew that man. And can you imagine? Yeah, I mean, he had a relationship with Peter or with Jesus. Peter did. I mean, he got to go in that room. You know, there was the 12, but then there was the three. He got to go up in there. They were close. And the, one, one of the gospel, um, it says that when he denied him the third time, that he looked and that Jesus was looking at him. Now, can you imagine what that must have felt like? It said the master was looking at him. So he knew. And it said he wept bitterly over what he did. But when Jesus rises from the dead, he never once goes up to Peter and says, Hey, Peter, I told you so. He never mentions it. He picks Peter up off the curb. He says, come on. Let's walk. He says, come on. Let's run. I've got something for you to do. And the first time he preaches, like 3,000 people get saved. <laughs> That's what God wants to do. So I can relate to that story. There's probably people in here that the image of who you're supposed to be, it took a hit. Maybe it's something you did. Maybe it's something that somebody else did to you. But see, I'm, I'm tired of playing church. If you can't come to church and get help, then where can you go? We need to lay aside all the facades and the want so-and-so to think that we're so spiritual. 
when on the inside you're hurting. On the inside, there's things that pound on your image of you and God. There's an anointing tonight. To deal with that. I'm talking about stuff that you don't even talk about. The stuff that you buried, stand with me, will you? The stuff that's been buried way down deep. And it's healing. That thing, that thing kind of made a deep scar. And it's, it's caused you not to pursue the things that you're supposed to be pursuing. If that's you tonight, will you come up and let me pray for you? Please, don't let this pass. Thank you, Father. Come on. If there's anybody also in here that's that you've had you've had thoughts of suicide, please come. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I just lay my hands on my sister. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you that you restore our soul. That you heal us, Father. Thank you for it, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that she'll run and not grow weary. That she'll walk and not faint. We thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Father. We bless you tonight. Lord, I thank you that there won't be a trace of this thing. Lord, that the the residue, the residue of it will be removed. I thank you for it, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lay hands on my brother, Father. Oh, I loose your anointing, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you're healing him. Lord, that you're washing his mind. Lord, that he'll not even remember these things. Thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Father. Bless him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. I didn't see you back there.
freedom as we look as we look at Jesus freedom as we look from a heavenly perspective thank you for freedom father hallelujah there's a lady that came in um, earlier for service I don't know if she's here so her name was Allison if you're here hallelujah thank you father she might not have went back hallelujah thank you father Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. You are faithful. You're faithful, Father. You're faithful. Hallelujah. Father, we lift up Allison to you. She came by earlier today, Father, and I just thank you for your hand on her. I thank you for your protection around her. I thank you that there's no distance in the anointing. There's no distance in your power, Father. So she yield out, yields over to you. I thank you for deliverance. Thank you for freedom. Thank you, Father, for freedom in her mind. Thank you, the Lord, every stronghold is broken in her life. Hallelujah. 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 I declare no strongholds. No strongholds over our church family. No strongholds. Every stronghold broken. Every stronghold broken. Hallelujah. Every stronghold broken. Freedom to walk free. Freedom to walk free. Hallelujah. Freedom to fulfill. Freedom to run. Freedom to get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every demonic stronghold broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus name you receive this word tonight amen thank you Eric thank you Nikki Drew for being here give Eric a hand for the word hallelujah you honor the word hallelujah you can go ahead and be seated man awesome word Eric whoo man man such an awesome presence here man thank you father mm. God is good are you ready to give tonight you know, the three different ways that we give, whether it's text to give, uh, envelope in the seat back in front of you. But as you're preparing to give, I wanted to read a scripture to you in Chronicle, First Chronicles 29. It just says, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Now get this, thine, O Lord. Now this is David's perception. You know, you know just with what Eric ministered, from this, having this heavenly perspective. You know, th this needs to be ingrained in everything that you do. Having a perspective. When you give, do you understand the God that you serve? So David is praying, and he's praying on behalf of all the people of Israel. And he, this is what he says. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power. And the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. Now, he, you know what he's doing? He's praying over their offering. They, they were bringing their offering to build, that, build the house of God. And he's praying really over their offering. And, and he's standing before God and he says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power. See, when you're releasing your offering, you need to give with the perspective. Lord, I'm holding this to you. I'm holding this up to you. Your, yours is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and the earth is yours. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. Thou art exalted as head above all. Now get this, both riches and honor come of thee, and you reign over all. And in your hand is power and might, and thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Man, when you give, man, that, you're, that's the kingdom that you're a part of. We talk about a kingdom that operates on sowing and reaping, a kingdom that operates on seed time and harvest. Man, that's what you're hooked up with. In his hand is to make great and to give strength to all. Amen. You ready to give tonight? Hallelujah. We started this on Sunday and we're going to continue this. And, and so let's hold up our offering and, and, let's, and let, let's pray this together and declare this together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak your word over my finances. Today, I choose to worship you with my tithes and my offerings. I am thankful for your provisions in my life, and I'm grateful for the promises of prosperity that are mine. As a child of God and as a giver, I live under an open 
hope in heaven. The blessing of God is working on my behalf. Poverty is a thing of the past, and everything I set my hand to prospers. Because of the blessing on my life, I receive jobs and better jobs. I receive raises and bonus, bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions. Because of the blessing, bills are paid off and debts are demolished. All of my accounts are flourishing and I give liberally to every good work. I possess the wisdom of God to store my finances in a way with which the world is not familiar. According to Psalms 84, I place my trust in you. <coughs> you are sun and shield around me. You give grace and glory. You withhold nothing from me. I am thankful that I am a child of God and I am favored by you. Give him a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah, ushers, you have received the offering while they're doing that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Uh, our founding pastor will be back with us on, on this coming Sunday. So just continue to just build your expectancy for what God's ministering to him and to minister through him to us. And, and I'll, I'll begin like I did this past Sunday at 945 and being praying over the service. Also next Thursday, it's our first Thursday of the month, which is men's meeting, our next level men's meeting. So I'm going to continue talking about breaking the mold and a topic I've been dealing with last month and as well as this month as I'll be talking about intent. Integrity, and so it bring for all the men. Bring somebody with you. That'll be uh, next Thursday evening at seven o'clock over in our youth facility, uh, and also for all the ladies, mark your calendars because their next Bible study at the church in this in the auditorium here will be on May seventh, and so they'll continue talking about um, the prayer petition on that. Amen. You receive the word tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for being with us, Eric, depositing your heart and your word on the inside of us. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you for the word that we heard tonight. And, and Lord, I, I thank you for this church family. Lord, as they go and, and go about the rest of their week, I thank you that they go with your blessing rest upon them. They go rest knowing that your hand of protection is surrounding about them. I thank you, Father, that, that they are healed, that they're whole. Father, that they're walking in your perfect will. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. We'll see you this weekend.